Welcome to Stogie TV. I'm your host, Kennedy. And we're going to be featuring an exclusive interview on this episode from one of the liveliest cities in all of Miami and one of the most historical cities in all of Miami, Little Havana. We're going to be interviewing EPC. We're here at the factory. We're here live on the street. Nothing scripted, all raw, bringing it right to you. We're going to be featuring the number two cigar of the year. Grab your EPCs, grab your lighters, it's time to smoke. Welcome to StogieTV.com. I'm your host, Kennedy, and we're going to be filming this episode from one of the hottest cigar lounges in South Florida. Stay tuned. Real, and we're here talking about Miami. You have Miami as your backdrop. You live here. The city is popping right behind us. Man, how does it feel to live here, enjoy the weather? The people are here, the people in the street, the city is living. Your cigar is available to them. How does that make you feel? Let me tell you, this, this area down here, you know, when we came from Cuba in 1959, we lived about basically about three blocks of here and we lived in a small one bedroom apartment which is still you know still there a one bedroom apartment one bedroom with you know my father <laughs> oh, my wow. mother myself uh, one of my uncles so, i mean you know this this area down here little havana has always been very important to me because you know i went to school here at riverside elementary school and then from there we moved and then this building this used to be an old jewelry store called Rurias. Yes. Glorious, that's old school, man. Old school, yeah, man. a lot of people don't know about that old school. Yes. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, so I mean, I'm, I'm, this is my, you know, my home. I don't live, I used to live about, basically about six or seven blocks from here. I lived there wow. for a long time. And then, you know, we moved out. But, uh, you know, I'm, I, every time I come back to Little Havana, you know, I come back home because that's, you know, this is where I grew up. This is it, man. That's, that's wild. Wow. This is yeah. Little Havana. And your store used to be Lurious. <laughs> your store used to be Lurious jewelry store. A jewelry store, Lurious. Wow, man. Hey, that's old school uh, back in the day, but it shows you how long they've uh, definitely been a part of the industry here in Miami. 
um, Little Havana. This is the hub. Do yourself a favor, put it on your vacation list if you're not from the Miami area, and come visit Little Havana. There's so much history. Um, look at look at the history that we are walking with. Yes. We have EPC right here, and we're walking with him, and all of this going on behind us. This is such an amazing experience and, and you can't beat the weather and obviously without a doubt you cannot beat the cigars it's a beautiful area let me tell you it is it is and we had the other store down on a street but you know we moved out of there um, about uh, probably about five years ago we moved out of there and uh, I mean that whole that whole a street like you know like you were saying it's just you know, such an important part of the Q of the Cuban community, because you know when the Cubans came, basically we all lived around this area. So I mean, this was all at one time, you know, Cubans. Wow. I wanted to talk to you about that. Being that, let's have a seat. The Cubans all came together mm -hmm. at that point. Um, what, what year would would you say? Would that would that be the '60s, the '70s? That was, that was. It started back in 19. <clears throat> we left Cuba. Excuse me, 59, and all the, already about three blocks down, one of the first factories that started here was Cinco Vegas, and then further up you had Camacho, mm -hmm. you have Padron, you have Padron who's still there, Camacho, Cinco Vega, myself, uh, a little bit further up on 18th you had uh, El Moro. I mean, we're talking back 1960s. You know? Wow. I mean, when the uh, when the cigar industry, the Cuban cigar industry, started here with all the expatriates from Cuba that came, that were in the business in Cuba, they came here and started over again uh, making their cigars. And at that time, you know, all the sales were basically done locally. A lot of uh, the, uh, the small coffee shops. Man, that's amazing because that, that's that, that built such a strong community. It did. It did. Man, and you got my wow. Because imagine all of you here. One time, coming over in a in a time of turmoil, and yes. you, and you stuck together. Everyone grew together. The friendships grew together. You've seen each each other's children grow up together. Exactly. That is an amazing experience, man. What an amazing story. It it is. It is. You know, I remember. Um, you know, although when my father came in six, when he opened his factory down on Street in '68, he started with one cigar maker. Wow. And uh, it was, you know. I, I used to see cigar makers there that were in their 80s, you know, their 70s, 80s years, and they used to work at that time with, you know, um, like they did in the old Cuban time with the rubber band. There was no molds when they started. Wow. The molds came into Cuba later on, and of course we used them here also. But I mean, it was an amazing experience to see that dedication, that artisan, the way they used to make cigars, and the, uh, you know, that just stuck with me. And it's, a, it's an experience that growing up with these people was, you know, very unique for myself. As was, you know, the Padrones were here, the Camachos, uh, I mean, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of, as a matter of fact, if I don't, if I recall, there were about 26 chinchales back in the, in the early 60s. 26? Yeah, all around this area in A Street. Wow. You know, small factories, two, three, ten cigar makers. And all, all the all the old Cuban cigar makers. Man. Now I think what saved this industry here in Miami was the fact that uh, you know you had the 1980 Maria Bordelif, and then you had That's the right. 95, you had the the other uh, uh, Guantanamo. That's right. And this is what kept the uh, you know the industry going. Wow, you guys, your whole culture stuck together. It is side by side. Everybody was friendly. You know, I mean, there was no, I mean, there was friendly competition. And uh, it was a very unique community, as it is now. And, and, uh, you, know, you go to Nicaragua, you go to Honduras, you go to uh, Dominican Republic. You know, the cigar family is always, for some reason, it's a very different industry than any other industry you may want to, you may know. Because you know, we're all competitors in the marketplace, but first and foremost, we're friends and we're family within our industry. That's a, a life lesson that any entrepreneur can use. It, it is, and believe me, that's why this business has, you know, in spite of everything that's going on, this is why, you know, this business has kept, uh, you know, growing the way it has. Man, 
congratulations on all your success and thank you. Um, thank you for definitely enlightening myself and all of our viewers on on the history of of you your family um, little Havana uh, we, some people take it for granted no believe me there were a lot of people that uh, you know that started here that uh, the sacrifices I mean I can speak from from my own experience with my father the sacrifices that uh, you know that he had to go through to uh, you know keep that little shop on a street open and uh, not only him but you know everybody and you hear stories that uh, you know from the, you know from those times that you say you know what kept them going and it was just that mindset that they said this is what we love to do and if we're never gonna go back to Cuba this is what we're gonna die doing and uh, listen that's the way it's been and I feel the same way <laughs> I hope I die doing this N not no time soon but <laughs> no, we don't want to do uh, right we don't want to do that but what I mean is um, bringing you the world of cigars bringing you the history the education Stogie TV that's what I meant um, doing this for as long as possible and, and bringing you the best experience possible. Let's go back inside and um, get some more of your beautiful uh, warehouse. Beautiful. All Enjoy right. Yeah, this is the uh, actual uh, vault where Lurias, the jewelry store, used to keep their uh, jewelry at night. And it's, uh, it's a masterpiece. We tried to... Uh, you know, we try to fix it, but uh, you know, I think this this states, you know, how important it is to us. You know, yeah. and we used to. Um, as a matter of fact, when we started doing the remodeling here years ago, this, we formed this building out for about 12, 15 years. The guy wanted to take this out, yeah. and he says, and I said, no, wait, wait. <laughs> This is what makes this building unique. So let's leave it there. I mean, this building's got to be 25, 30, 40 years old. Sure. So. All right. Okay. So you just, just let me just. Okay. <clears throat> if we go back here. Where we do our, our shipping, all the uh, orders. Oh, so this order shipping takes place, and yeah. and, and your placement of the orders. Right. We have a exclusive, uh, exclusive. <coughs> we have a freezer. You see down there, those two good-looking guys. All right. <laughs> you know who that is, right? Tony Dorset. Wow! Wow! Uh, hey, look at that. <laughs> yeah. We have a freezer where we, um, you know, every cigar that that comes in here, we freeze them in Dominican Republic, and then we do another freezing here to be sure that we won't have any type of, uh, you know, issue with lessons armor or any of that type of stuff. Yeah. And we keep our booth here. We have eight, yeah. actually we have eighteen thousand square feet here. Eighteen thousand square feet. Yeah. Wow. And there's our humidor. where we keep all our inventory that's um, basically ready to, uh, you know, to leave for the, uh, for the orders. We have, in Dominican, we have a uh, 40,000 square feet uh, place and where we also have a, uh, a humidor like this and we also have a freezer. So, Excellent. Sixty-five. So the temperature inside of here is about sixty-five degrees. Right, and the relative humidity is about sixty-eight to seventy. Relative humidity sixty-eight to seventy. All right. And this for you know for uh, for this for the product after it's been packed, that's basically the temperature and humidity you want to take it off. Now a lot of people, you know, they have their humidors. What I suggest in your humidors for our cigars. But basically for cigars that have a lot of Nicaraguan tobacco, so try to keep the humidity a little bit lower, like 62 to 65. So definitely, and, you hear that, right? The Nicaraguan and, and, tobacco. Yeah, and for Maduro's also. For so like for the Maduro, do you strongly recommend a that? Lower, lower humidity. Really? Lower? So it's like a 62? 65. 65? Right. Because people ask me for, I, uh, hey, what should I set my humidor at? 
I said, listen, it all depends on what kind of sticks you have in there. Exactly. If you have ABC stick, it, and you're telling me that, oh, I set it normally at 72. That may be hard for some some of the blends, you know, like uh, the Dominic, uh, Nicaraguan blends, the uh, Maduro blends, that might be a little bit hard for that. Now, if you have tobaccos with uh, Connecticut, which have a thinner wrapper, uh, maybe some of the uh, Sumatras or the Cameroon, you may want to keep it up a little bit higher, 65, 68, maybe up to 70. Wow. I would try to keep it up in that, uh, you know, that uh, little bit. Great recommendation from EPC himself. 62 to 65, especially for the Nicaraguan cigars in your personal humidor. Exactly. exactly. Absolutely. And basically, we keep you know all the uh, the lines that we have here, the core. We keep the uh, the uh, New Wave Connecticut, the Inch, the uh, like. Well, I started. You see, there's none here now. Uh, the new cabinet, the new reserva that we just came out with, and. Uh, Basically, they stay here, you know, to the ready to uh, to leave. So you can, so we can, we have cigars here that may be here. For instance, you have this is the uh, show run 2010. So this thing has been here now for basically five years. 2010. Wow. Wow, I know those are going to be amazing cigars. We have some Elencos, you know, we have some short runs 2012, the original ones. And for those who are not aware, the term short run. Right, those are a cigar we come out every first quarter of every year. We come out, we started in 2010, and every year we do a limited edition kind of, you know, we do 1,500 uh, boxes of a Robusto, a Toro, and a Gordo. <clears throat> and once that's gone, that's gone. But that was like uh, our first one here. Wow. Two thousand. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. And he's showing up around and we bought this from the Encore. And you call it the what? The Encore. Encore. So this is uh yes, it's funny because now a lot of people are asking for this. You know, you only have it. Basically, what you see there are uh, six boxes. Yeah, only six boxes. Yeah, left. we have now. There may be some more out there, but this, this can they can they order from you? No, or they have to go to a retailer. Go to your local retailer and make sure you request the first box ever by the EPC. Right, EPC himself, the first box, two thousand nine. Go to your local retailer. It's a must-have. Believe me, it's a very unique cigar. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. You take the bloodline of your family and you pour it into all of your cigars so smokers like myself and smokers like all of you can enjoy. And man, I can't wait. I'm definitely going to get my hands on one, alright? <laughs> you might. I might. I might. I might.